Well, every day we seem to be talking about a child that's missing somewhere in our country. Just today, Alexis Murphy, the teen missing from Virginia. Also, Elena Steinfurt, the toddler from Ohio. And one of the ways to get the word out, as we all know, besides all of us in the media, right? Posters. You know the posters with the picture of the missing child with all of his or her characteristics. But do they really make a difference? Our Lynn Berry investigates. Meet Ryan. He's the son of a producer on Raising America. We put Ryan's picture on a missing poster with his age, height, and weight, and surrounded a playground at a busy Atlanta park with the Flyers on two separate days. Oh, a little kid got missing. Then, with cameras rolling, we sent him out to play, right by the posters. These people sitting on a bench right next to the playground, not acknowledging the Flyers or Ryan. And how about these people swinging near him? David Zizzi's daughter noticed the posters, though he didn't at first. You know, a lot of times it's usually a dog or a cat or something, and I just don't really pay a lot of attention to them. So when we walked by them, I didn't look initially because I thought that's what it was. Other people looked at the posters and kept right on walking. But even some people who looked intently didn't notice the supposedly missing boy right in their midst. Did you keep extra attention because you'd seen a sign? Absolutely. So what if I told you that you were actually swinging right next to this little boy? What? No way. I thought I actually, the guy with the, cow, the hat on over there, the Atlanta hat, yeah, yeah. is that him really? That's him. Wow. I mean, doesn't that, are these effective? Um, I, I guess not. <laughs> The few people who noticed Ryan and took action, heroes in our book. That's Marie Williams, a mom herself, recognizing Ryan, pointing him out to others in the area, then trying to make sure he was safe. And I looked at him and I looked back at the poster and I'm like, you know, I started walking to him, asking him, you know, what's your name? And he's like, Ryan. And I'm like, that's the little boy that's missing, you know, because I see the posters around the park. So I immediately grabbed him and asked him, do he know where his parents are? What, and then what happened? And he said he didn't know. So I started shaking and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's missing, you know, and he needs help. Some parents used the sign as a teaching aid. I said maybe his mommy and daddy didn't see him run away. And that means his mommy and daddy are looking for him. And that's why it's always important to stay close to mommy and daddy when you're on a playground or in a public place. It's hard enough to watch your own kids without feeling like you have to pay attention to everything else around you. Sometimes, uh, especially around the park, sometimes we'll glance at it but not look at it all the way. And you're more concerned sometimes of your own child when you have your own child with you. There's no judgment here, but Marie Williams has a plea for everyone. You got to be more focused, you know, because if it's the other way around, you would want someone to help you out if your child was missing as a parent, parent to parent. Hey, man, go wow. mama. Yes. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So what did you find out, Lynn? I like mean, what that, stood out? That's the lesson there, right? You can put all of these signs up everywhere, but it really comes down to vigilance. We hear about it in terrorism. It's the same when it comes to protecting our children. You have to pay attention. You have to look up, Absolutely. be aware. And, you know, we live in this digital age where we're always on our phones. We're on we're our not iPads. Paying we're not paying attention. Did you find that more people were paying attention or not paying attention, or was it sort of 50-50? You know, it was interesting. You heard that guy say, I saw. But, and I thought maybe, yeah, okay, but you didn't put two and two together. There were some people that actually said, oh, I didn't want to be nosy. I didn't want to get involved. And that blonde Knowing woman. Knowing that there's a missing kid, they, I didn't want to get but involved. But, you know, it's That's subconscious, stuff. I think. Wow. I think that it's just subconscious. They call it in psychology the bystander effect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah, people. You, everybody thinks well. that someone else is going to do it, yes. so I'm not going to do anything. And you don't think you're going to yeah. be the one in a trillion that happens to come across that right. missing child. One and one. that's what the horseback yeah. rider Man, said with Hannah Anderson. Two things. Number one, great piece. Number two, <laughs> I found a new hero in that woman there, right? Exactly. How and unbelievable yeah. was that? She is a mother herself, so obviously this got to her core. She said she was shaking, her heart sank. And and while 
you know, it's it's sad to see her have that reaction. The lesson there is really it yeah. is important for people. To was it obvious right. that he was there by himself without a parent? You know, it's it's hard at parks because there are so many people around that you don't know which kid is with a parent, which right. isn't, because there are parents everywhere. Now, if you're in the middle of an empty store and you see a kid wandering around, you maybe be a little bit more sure. aware yeah. that this kid's by himself. But at a park, you can't really tell. Well, 30 years ago, it started like this. You remember the pictures of missing kids on the milk cartons? You might remember the video from 1985 when that first came out. Then there's posters like this one that we made of our producer's son. The child's picture, characteristics, the word missing, and big, bold letters. But now the search is online. Centralized pages like the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and individual Facebook pages set up by families and friends like this one for Skelton Brothers, who's been missing since Thanksgiving of 2010. Dr. O'Toole, what do you think? Is there a better method here? Can you even compare? Well, it's hard to compare 20 years ago when I was working missing children's cases, and that's what we had were the flyers and the milk cartons. But I would say at this point, there's so much available to us when these cases occur. So we need to use virtually every medium possible, and don't just use social networking because that one woman in your last piece she recognized the flyers so use every the old-fashioned ways use those but use the current social networking ways as well it should be multiple ways venues to put out that information about the missing um, missing child well that matches up with what mark just tweeted me he said it worked for me along with facebook and twitter i never gave up hope and found our daughter within mm, a wow. week That's after fantastic. posting yeah. is that amazing wow. so so time is of the effort, uh, essence right yeah. and i think it's also important to remember that you post it more than once if you're using social media not everybody stays on twitter or stays on facebook all day long so posting it multiple times throughout the day and multiple Absolutely. days of the week is really important in terms of getting as many eyes on it as possible. And in our piece, we weren't encouraging people to not use the missing poster yeah. signs. I mean, but you can hang this poster up and it reaches 30 people in a park. You right. can go on Facebook and Twitter and reach a billion people. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just a matter and of that's the point. Yeah. It's in conjunction. It's everything yeah, right. taking in conjunction. Hopefully it does uh, great work, and the other, as in this program. There's another big part of this, and that's to, how do you use the media? How do you get the media involved? To get the media involved, you've got to make yourself available. And as difficult as it is for a parent, you remember the Elizabeth Smart case. I mean, her dad kept coming down that driveway day after day. Mm. And you keep doing that, they'll stay around. You keep the story in the news. You keep the picture on the screen and, and again it's just more possibilities of someone seeing Which someone recognizing her. Yes. And according to the National Center for Missing Exploited Children, it's those first three hours that are so critical. I mean their stats say that um, abducted kids who are killed are killed within the first three hours. Yes. Wow. Um, so that's I mean it happens quickly. It's not like and what do you think about that, uh, Mary Ellen? I mean, is is the intention usually to kill the thrill of the kill versus holding on to a child to to because with Elizabeth Smart, he was a right, a cult member, right? He was he had her yeah. living with him and right. Well, it, it again, it depends on the motives of the offenders. We have some, probably the majority, um, they'll take the child and the child will be harmed or killed pretty quickly, but then you have other offenders and the purpose of their crime is to take the child to a pre-selected location where they can keep them for days, weeks, months, even years. We just saw the Aero Castro case. So yeah. they don't all fall in, in to, into one group. What, what we as profilers look at is how did the crime unfold? How did the offender access that child? And that tells us a lot about where, what the motives are and what is most likely the immediate outcome or the long-term outcome. Well, Dr. Atul, you have been in this uh, business doing this for decades. We sure appreciate you weighing in today. It was so helpful and so, so insightful.